Good morning from Cholon. You heard that right? Not her, not Herzliya, not Rothschild Boulevard, Cholon. I met Israel's, one of Israel's probably largest companies, is that fair to say? Correct. Okay, I'm sitting with the legendary, hmm. one of Israel's top marketers, Ooh. and she doesn't pay me for PR. <laughs> um, Angie Geffen, who is the VP Marketing of Code Fuel, which is the division of Perion. Before we talk about Code Fuel, and we're going to talk a lot about Code Fuel, and I want to show you the offices here, and she's going to talk to you about the company and the growth, and it's all very impressive. Give me a little history about Conduit, Perion, Code Fuel, just get a little context, and just if you can. Well, as Perion Network... Hold on, I'm going to interrupt you a lot in the meeting, because sure. you're going to see people asking questions. I gotcha. Uh, Michal oh, Hirschel said, Angie. Hey, um, also, Eva Longoria, what do you think? Totally, right? Totally Eva Longoria. I follow Eva Longoria on Snapchat. She's hilarious, by the way. Okay, now, yes, give me some background. Perion Network uh, is a publicly traded company that has multiple divisions. Uh, in total, it's 650 employees, and overall, we're a happy company. I mean, the, the vibe here is something special. Like, Absolutely. it's really, and again, Cologne, which is really interesting. Uh, but you come in here, it's like crazy vibe, crazy energy. It's awesome. Okay. So, w there's, again, there's there was Conduit. Does Conduit uh, as a brand still exist? Or just give me some, make some order for me in my, my brain. Okay. So, Conduit uh, was a part of Perion Network. Um, we have been for several years now named Code Fuel. And uh, Code Fuel d did inherit people from the uh, Conduit division. Got it. Uh, there is a spinoff that went off not connected to Perion at all, mm -hmm. and uh, we benefit from the knowledge and understanding of uh, engineers that work there. Hey, some amazing engineers and talent in this Incredible. company, for sure. Okay, so you're VP Marketing of Code Fuel. Correct. Maze Code Fuel. Code Fuel is a division that focuses on uh, superior browsing experience and uh, solutions for content publishers that focus mainly on their user behavior on their websites. Okay, now in English. <laughs> for dumb people like me. What sure. does that mean? Break it down. Like, what does I'll, it break, mean? I'll break it down. Okay. Um, a publisher, uh, let's say for example, the New York Times, they're interested in uh, keeping their users on the sites. Uh, but they don't want to feel like the user comes onto the website and is attacked by articles that are not actually articles, they're more sponsored or advertisements. Right. Well, Codefuel has this technology to allow the publishers to give a better user experience on their sites. Mm -hmm. um, and the users feel like they're enjoying the content for free, um, and getting relevant content during their user experience. So, if I understand correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, sure. this is what's known as native advertising. Yes, but it's deeper than that. It's more in the world of intent-based, where the signals of the users are actually understood and converted into things that are more interesting to the user themselves and not necessarily related to the content of the article, but more of the behavior of the user and its intent from the beginning. Um, more often times you can get native advertising and they um, are related to the article but the user never asked for it. In our instance, our technology first asks the user if they're interested in seeing what they want and then they, they get to learn more on their own. Okay, so let's, let me, let's walk me through this, the flow. I come to the New York Times. Right. Before I was on the New York Times, I was surfing Sports Illustrated. Yes. Am I, am I understanding the flow? In other words, it's based on cookies, it's based on my behavior pre is that the story? Yeah, it's a total experience of uh, your browsing experience. It's, it's not just basically understanding what you love reading about New York Times or in the sports section. Mm -hmm. It's more about who you are and what you are on the internet. So you do get relevant advertising that's related to your real life. Got it. So it's highly personalized, customized. Yes. Okay, and so I'm going to ask some tough questions. Um, yeah. Since I know you're highly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask these questions if I didn't know you were capable of answering them. But I mean, it's a tough space, right? right. And you're, I mean, you're playing in, in the world of the tabulas and the outbrains, right? This is the same world. It is in the same world, I have to say, but the difference between them and us is that it's based on the user's intent. The user is first asked if they're interested in learning more about that subject, whereas others mention names be set aside, um, the content is already given. Full disclosure, I love Adam Singold. I have a crush on him. <laughs> anyway, okay. No, I mean, it's clearly different value prop, I would say, but at the end of the day, like, you know, as you know, as we discussed last time we met, at the end of the day, you're competitors because you go both go to the New York Times and try to, you know, sell them. Well, anybody would be a competitor because the real estate of a, on a content publisher's website um, could be given to any other company. Brilliant. We, I need to pause. Startups. Listen to what Angie just said. Okay. You don't even realize what you just said, but most startups think when you ask it, you know, startups in Israel or a lot of entrepreneurs globally, who are your competitors? What do they say? This, that, and the other. What do they usually say though? Before they, they list the competitors, most will say, I have no competitors. 
Right. That's impossible. Right. But why do they say Even that? Kleenex tissues is a competitor. Right. But why do they say that though? They say that because they, they define a competitor as someone doing the exact same thing as them. But that's not what a competitor is. A competitor no. is someone who's going to the Washington Post just like you are and saying, use us. And you're saying, use us. Two different products. But you're going after the same target with the same quote unquote value prop, same sales pitch. So very, uh, I think you kind of said it just naturally because it comes to you. But most people don't realize what you just said. And it's absolutely, um, definitely. I, they, they should reconsider who's on their marketing team because it's the marketing team's responsibility to understand the strategy and to understand their competitors in an entire ecosystem, not narrow-minded. So, do you recall approximately four minutes ago when we were walking and I told you I'm going to Shanghai next month? Yes. You remember which company I, to, I told you about? Huawei? Remember yes. that? So we have Walter Jennings in here who leads com, comms for all of Huawei Global uh, and he is a rock star. I feel like you guys should, you guys would get along real well. Hello, anyway, Walter. He says greetings from, how do you, Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Know, is that how you pronounce? Yeah. Shenzhen. Yeah, he's awesome. So he's the guy that brought me to Barcelona. He's bringing me to Shanghai next nice. month. I'm super excited about it. Okay, so I just want to put Kobe Menachemi in here from Crossrider. Oh, you know Crossrider? Yes, yeah. of course. Okay, we got Daniel Treisman, an angel investor and one of the world's largest um, affiliate marketers. Mm. He's an amazing guy. Miriam Schwab, an amazing, amazing, um, oh, Shira Porat's in here. Hello, Shira. Hi, Shira. I think we were just talking about you, right? Yes. Right. A okay. of mine. Yes. Uh, okay, we got Daniel Chernomzo from a super hot Israeli startup, um, mm -hmm. Rapid API, that mm. is kicking serious butt. Invite me to Israel. Walter, you are invited <laughs> to Israel. Name a, a day and you will be here, man. Anytime. No question about it. Okay. Yeah. Tell me more about, about what you do, about what CodeField does and what Angie does. Mm. What CodeFuel does, um, in my opinion, you know, I'm, I'm not biased at all, but uh, I think CodeFuel creates magic for the internet experience. I think the, uh, the talented engineers here, um, the, their capabilities, their understanding, and the forefront of their focus, which is the user, um, is incredible. The technology is running faster than before. Um, the user experience is becoming more and more unique. And this is what we do here in CodeFuel, the development. Lou Weiss asks, I'm not sure I understand this question, maybe you will, but he asks, is your technology user approved? In other words, permission granted? So I, I think he's asking opt in. Do I have to opt in? Is it, it are you integrated on the publisher's site or is it something that like like an extension where I have to install? Or we integrate on the publisher's site. Okay, so if I come to the site, do I does it ask do I have to opt in or is it's just you work with the publisher and it gives me just a better experience? I'm assuming, right? So one of the major focuses for publishers is user experience because we know through market research that um, publishers are interested in having their users on the site for longer. Obviously, more um, money. Right. And so, yes, we do have a, a goal for our publishers to monetize with our tool, but we definitely have the exact same goal face-to-face, 50-50 for, en for en increasing engagement. Okay, so we have someone in here named Mo Mernick who said super cool. Mo Mernick does business development at a company that you've never heard of, and I didn't hear it till last week, called Home Talk. Hmm. That is the world's largest DIY do-it-yourself platform, and they are growing at speeds that I've never in my life heard of, but that's not the coolest part. The coolest part is not even that they're in Jerusalem. That's still not the coolest part. The coolest part is that 90% of their staff is female and Haredi. Ooh, go for it. Crazy that's company. It. Great Amazing stuff. Amazing company. Hometalk.com. You should definitely check them out. Do you, you, you build things with your hands or not so much? Oh, absolutely. Do you you got to check out this. Hometalk.com. Unbelievable company. Will do. Okay, so um, how many people work in the company? How do they work? How many people work here? 600, 600. plus. And you have offices where? All over New York, Israel, London, South America, San Francisco. Wow. Okay. I'll, move, I'll go on. And the CEO of the company is Joseph Mandelbaum, yes. who I know my whole life. And he's, how's he as a boss? You're on, he's fantastic. You wouldn't say if he wasn't, you're online, but he's, he is. No, he really is fantastic. He's, an awesome he's guy. very approachable, he's open minded. Um, he really gives us, as employees, um, the strength and the courage to move forward in what we really believe in. And then he, you know, he extracts the creativity of every employee. And, and he, that's really a gift. And he's a mensch. Absolutely. Okay, so you're VP Marketing of Code Fuel. Yes. So, what like talk to me about like growth of this company and challenges and like how, how do you grow? Because you you I mean your publisher you're, you're pitching to publishers right? You have to work with the publishers. Yes. Is there any s secret sauce or smart kind of tips how to get the publishers? Because again, everybody's pitching publishers. I think it's really simple um, content that we're talking about. You know, we need to tell the publishers uh, what they want to hear. But most importantly, the w the angle that we take is we understand the publishers' users. Oftentimes, companies market to their potential clients. Um, I think that it has to be bottom up and up uh, from top, top to bottom. So right? you have a question from uh, Daniel Geffen. Are we related? I think you have two F's in your last name, correct? Correct. So no, you are not related. No. Oh, Char oh, hello, Mr. Sh okay, Mr. Miss Sharon, uh, who I know from back in the day from Interactive, is an amazing 
Mensch, like you, Hills? Oh, thanks. Aww, that's so sweet. Just like what was the Haredi site called again? That is hometalk.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon, you guys need to know. You and Sharon, Sharon's like a powerhouse. She's wow, amazing. I love powerhouses. So wait, talk to me about what you're, hi you're hiring. You guys are always oh. hiring. What are you hiring? What are yeah. you looking for? Uh, Front-end developers, full-stack developers, anyone on the R&D team uh, who has pure talent. You're looking for talented developers. Yes, talented developers who want to be exposed with the most advanced uh, technologies. M mobile, web, both? Both. Absolutely both. Do you guys um, have a native, I mean, you don't have native, do you have SDKs or something? Like, do you have native app stuff or it's all mobile web? It's mobile web. Okay, so you, I mean, so you say, when you say mobile, you mean mobile web, not yes. actual, like, Correct. developer, like, app developers. Correct. Okay, cool. And, um, I mean, you're always expanding the team. Constantly expanding, looking for good talent. I mean, anyone who really comes to the offices and understands what we're about and understands how the employees are um, superior in the um, in the whole chain reaction of uh, the product itself, the selling process, the development process. Look, look at Walter. He can't stop. He's always, <laughs> once a marketer, always a marketer. He just shared your link and the thing, codefuel.com. Yeah, Walter. Yes. Uh, Robbie says, for the record, Angie looks better than Eva Longoria. You know Robbie? <laughs> you, Rob you know Robbie. I know Robbie, for okay. sure. Okay. Thanks, Robbie. Love you. Uh, and Walter said Angie looks better than Hillel. That's obvious. <laughs> I mean, come on, uh, Walter. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. By the way, Walter, my uh, my P9 guys on its way. He sent me a, a Huawei P9. It's like the top of the line phone on the market today. Probably oh, the best smartphone. Fun. And it was in customs, stuck in customs for the last week and a half, and oh, it's no. coming today. So I'm yes. super pumped about that. And to share the love because I heard it's an unbelievable phone. Very. What phone do you use? iPhone. I use iPhone. iPhone. Yeah, we're all on iPhone. But I am using your Huawei watch. Look at that. Ooh, so very, snazzy. Isn't that nice? Look at that. It, I mean, it's. I like. This is not an endorsed message, but I happen to love this watch. I like. Okay, so you're hiring developers. What else yes. can you tell me about the company that people need to know? I mean, what's the culture like here? The culture, um, well, you know, there's always people talking about family oriented, but here they really are. They really, they're very understanding. They see everyone that. says they're family oriented, but here they really are. But here they really are, yeah, because they, um, the be the method here and the understanding the employees' ecosystem in their life, in the office and outside the office. Okay, is I really need to interrupt you again. Yeah. I'm sorry. You have a few really important questions here. Are you looking for product managers? Correct. You are? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, Ben, send me your CV, or unless you want to give out your email, or send me your CV. I'll pass it on to him. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, I'm hillsfold at gmail, H-I-L-Z-F-U-L-D at gmail. Now, here's a big question, because you got Dan Treisman in here, who's theinquisitor.com, and it is a humongous publisher. Like, I don't know, I can't tell you the numbers. Dan, share your, Dan Treisman, share your, share your numbers if you want. But he asks, how focused is the company on search? What if the publishers have no search traffic on site? Uh, there's two tracks that we focus on in Code Fuel. One of them is uh, content publishers. Bye, Walter. And, uh, Walter said bye. Bye, Sorry. Walter. Uh, is content publishers really uh, focusing on their user experience and thirty-five engagement? to forty-five monthly million monthly? That's how much traffic he has. So I think you should probably talk, talk to, to him. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Daniel. I mean, I'll introduce you to Angie. First of all, good people. I know you work with a lot of the companies we mentioned before, but. You know, good people, and so I'll, I'll introduce you guys for sure. Yes. Uh, and if and if it does work out, Treisman, I, I ask nothing more than just a DJI Phantom 4 drone. Mm. It's not a big deal, right? I'm not even going to ask for a BMW X5 that you just bought. All I want is the drone. Just That's a it. Drone. <laughs> you just bought the sickest <laughs> car ever. Okay. Um, so wait, Ben says thanks. Uh, yeah, no problem. Send me your send me your thing. Uh, Avery Rats are publishers paid like Google, Yahoo, Facebook ads, or do they get paid in traffic like Outbrain? Ah, good question. I'll put together people who can answer those questions. I can as well, but... You're the marketing and not the finance. Okay. All right. So, I'll, uh, Avery, if you want to send me questions, I'll, I'll happily pass it on to Angie and she Absolutely. can get the right people to answer yeah. you. Tribesman, steak maybe? Dude, mm -hmm. if I'm making you money on your site, I want a drone. Steak, schmick. <laughs> uh, Outbrain pays cash. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, we like Outbrain. Eitan Galai and Yaron Galai are good friends. So, yes. no, uh, we all like... Everybody likes everyone here. This is the Israeli ecosystem. We're all buddies here. Um, but anyway, okay, so you know what, so Tom, let's, I think we're going to, I think I want to show people this office. What do you think? We would take a little walk around? I think you should. Let's, uh, let's do that. I hope the, the connectivity stays strong. Let's walk around. Let's yes, go. let's do it. Let's do it. All right, this is, because you got to see this office. It's really beautiful. Um, so tell me more about the company. How long have you been here? Uh, I've been here for um, about 17 months. 17 months, okay. Yeah, and I would definitely say that this is uh, one of the better experiences Okay. Uh, working for you know, I'm going to turn the camera around that way, if I may. Yeah. I want people to see these, these offices. Hold on, let me get 360 here. here look, you want to go this way and look at this little room? Yes, here? yes. Let's, let's go down to the marketing department. Let's do that. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, just look at the it's a beautiful, clean aesthetic. Like. Yes, we're always eating. Everyone's eating. Hi, guys. Hi. We're live. Sure. <laughs> okay. One thing's for sure you never go hungry around here. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. You're going to have to show me that. We're doing lunch, so I'm looking this forward to the, that. This is the marketing department. Ma, you're watching? 
Yeah. You're watching the stream? Really? Yeah. Who are you? Gabriel. Hey, Gabriel, what do you do here? I'm a designer. You're a designer? Nice yeah. Are you really watching it? Seriously? Yeah, I do. Like right now? No. Oh, he's turned it off? Yeah. That's fine. Oh my god, I see Reese's peanut butter cups. This is bad news. Bad news for the Jews. I will not indulge, despite my temptation. This yes. is the ultimate Johnny Roseanne. <gasps> what is me? Oh. I got my 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm very lovely to meet you, sir. You have a great accent. Oh, thank what you. What do you do here? Thank you. It gets me out of a lot of trouble. There you go. <laughs> I'm responsible for content for Code Fuel. Really? Yes. Wow, that's a big job. He does magic. Yes, so what does that mean? You're responsible for I mean, content. it covers everything from product to marketing to. What do you? What do you? What do you? What kind of content do you generate? Like. Text, blogging, audio, video, everything, anything. everything from social to blogs to, to, to product language to that's awesome. To One person, script. man, that's you guys. That's a, that's a big big job. It's a big way. Do you, do you do video content at all or not yet? We're starting, yeah. Good, excellent. Yeah, big well, we're, big we're, big stuff. We're getting a great YouTube you? channel together. Check out Roy Ganots. Hey man, what's up? What up? Who are you? The CEO and conversion superstar. Really? Oh, you yeah. really are watching. Oh, he's watching live. That's funny. Look at that. <laughs> okay, that is a that's totally meta. How did you know we were live? Do you follow me on Facebook? Oh, do you really? really? Oh man, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, wait, so what do you? So you're the SEO guy here. That's also a big job for a company like this. Yeah. What yeah. do you do before? Where were you before? How many years have you been here? How long have you been here? How long? Speak English. Yeah. How long have you been in, in the company? Ah, uh, uh, for uh, two years. Uh, two years. What did you do before that? Uh, SEO manager in uh, another uh, company. A web company here in Israel. Yeah. Very cool. Has, has, how much has SEO changed in the last couple of years? The algorithms and well, so changes every day, right? Uh, how do you keep day. track of everything? Um, reading uh, articles, you know. Uh, like, I remember back in the day, like keywords and like uh, density of keywords, like that does, doesn't matter anymore, right? Like how many times you mention a certain word in an article, it's. Uh, there, there are uh, some some techniques. Te techniques, yeah, techniques to uh, it. Uh, no. Interesting. We should have coffee. I'd love to learn some from your expertise. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Bye. 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 Great classes too, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. Full of compliments today. Look at this guy. Who are you? This is the legendary hey, Victor. Victor. Victor, you? What, what do you do here? Uh, he saves the day, basically. <laughs> yeah. Saves the day? He saves the day. What does that mean? I'm doing lead generation, and I'm also the team leader for uh, Johnny, Gabby, and Kobe. For the very, very cool. Guys. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. You have a lot of, He's you look like you have a very high-tech setup here. He's yeah. been in the company for how long? Uh, combined with Conduit, like, Eight years. Wow. Insane, huh? So you work at the time with Yochai and uh, yes. yeah. yes. Yochai's my boy. I love him. I love you. you know that his wife just joined Amazon? Debbie just joined Debbie? Amazon Web Services. Really? Yeah. yeah. I just saw yesterday on Facebook. Oh, really? My friend was they here from Amazon. Who acquired um, by eBay? Who was acquired by eBay? A sales product? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. What about them? I thought you were referring her. No, Debbie, Debbie was a, she was at Carmel. Ventures and now she just she started working at Amazon Web Services. Anyway, who are you? I'm Vicky. I'm Vicky. a marketing manager. Cool. So yeah. this is the marketing department right here. Exactly. Yes. Very and, cool. And, there and, more, and there and more, but he's um, overseas traveling and she's in a meeting. Got it. Okay, and so what does marketing manager do here? What do you do? Oh, wow, everything. We are responsible on creating the new videos, new brand videos, oh. building our website. Mo, if you're still watching, Mo Mernick from Home Talk, they have viral videos that have like 90 million views. They're oh. like amazing a video. If you want, I'll introduce it. You can get some tips from them. They're an unbelievable right. company. It's awesome. Keep it up. Yes. Awesome. Good luck. Let me know if I can help with anything. Okay, we're turning them around. Okay, where are we going now? HR is there. Let's go, All right, let's go to say hello to HR. Look, I mean, look at this office, though. It's so nice here. It's so nice. Love it here. Great, like... Right, let's see the meeting room. Oh, love it. Wait, is there, is there a story here? What is this? What is this? What is this doing here? This is a special wand. A special wand yes. to generate more traffic. Yes. Dead Poets Society. It's a very chilled room here. I like it. Mm. I'm digging it. Cool. And again, Cholon. Like, is there a story there? It just makes sense. You know, you get more for your buck and the employees get the benefit of being And you can't like, get this in you know, Tel Aviv. Like. This is like the most high tech. We just passed a HR. This is all. This is finance. Cool. This whole area is... So how many floors in this building is yours? We have two floors. Two floors. Two okay. full floors. Right, I'm turning the camera around. Yes, it's way more interesting than my face. Uh, UI, UX, product. This is all code fuel here? This is all code fuel. Wow. Check out this room that we have for, um, for little conferences. Okay. And we do a ton of training in here. A ton. Ooh. Of high tech. Ooh. Advanced sound. This looks like... Quality. This looks like rather than movies. Like, no, it's insane. This is awesome. People just love hanging out in the on branding there on the wall. I love it. Of course. Very cool. Let me just see the view here because the view is yes. awesome. Wow. Kind of love the view. Hold on. I, don't, I, I think the only time I've ever been here is to come to Perion offices. 
Look at this view. Holy smokes. Love it. Love it. Where are we eating for lunch? Anything good you recommend in the area? Well, I'm guessing meat. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's the kind of girl. She speaks my language. That's what I'm talking about. Wow, that's a big, those are very big TVs. Yeah, of course. Holy smokes. Yeah. Okay, okay. There's some questions I'm going to take soon as soon as we sit down somewhere so I can actually read the screen. Okay. Let's see. Where are we going now? We are. Look at the nice art. Let's take a walk down R&D. Over there. Over there. Okay. The insanity begins. Love that. Yes. The insanity begins from there. All the way down. That's all R&D there. from there? All R&D. All the way down. Seriously? Yeah. How many developers do you have? Whew, tons. People are very interested in working the type of technology that we have because it's extremely advanced. It allows them to learn a lot more uh, during their career and get exposed. You know, Robert Scoble, the mega blogger, always talks about context, uh, the importance of context. I feel like that's your, that's your DNA. You're contextual surfing, and it knows me, and it personalizes the experience to me, right? That's yes. what it's all about. Yes. He wrote a book called The Age of Context. Room. What? Look at this what meeting room. That? Hold on a what, second. What is that? That is awesome. Hey. Behind curtain one. Yeah. Seriously. It's <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. It's just, you know, Very we, colorful. we really encourage. You know what it reminds me of? interrupting i apologize but okay. this reminds me of the airbnb hq in, in san francisco they have mm. little rooms that are themed after every city in the world and it's very like colorful and it's, it's pretty awesome this that's is interesting nice. our yeah. meeting rooms on this floor are all after um famous locations and their meetings rooms upstairs are named after bands like led zeppelin, led zeppelin metallica i saw yeah yeah R.E.M. that's awesome love it so every um one of our engineers gets the um the most advanced equipment for them to work on and develop on whatever they need uh, they People get. don't know what the hell, what's going on here. Like, look at Seriously, what are you doing in my space? <laughs> Long selfies. <laughs> okay, very cool. This is, I love. This is a great. Well, look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Moment. Look at this um, wallpaper here. Yeah. Is that like carpet or something? I just need to think. Okay, I don't. I just actually don't. I don't. I, I don't let's get this. I. I'm gonna sit there and never move ever again. <laughs> okay, let's read some questions here. Hold on. Okay. If you want the drone to bring you the state, goose liver optional. Okay, outbrain paste. Okay, no more questions. We have good. All right, we have a lot of viewers, but the questions are, I think we answer everyone's questions. Okay, wait, so tell me more. Let's tell, me something, tell me something interesting that you haven't told anyone yet about working here. Hmm. On your, on your, what's your day like? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, well, I start my day early in the morning. Me too. 4.30, I'm up. It's a problem. Wow, That's 4.30. Who threw you out of bed? No one. It's called addiction to tech news. Yeah. So okay. when, do you, when do you get to work? Like so, super early? Uh, no, I start my day in the morning from home. Okay. And then, you know, I clear out my inbox. I make sure I'm on top of it all. Isn't it crazy how emails become such an annoying task? <laughs> it's like, part of your job. Yeah, but like emails was created to increase efficiency and it yes. does the opposite. It, we all get like stuck in our inbox. Every Saturday night when I come back from Shabbat, I have like 5,000 emails to catch Seriously. up. Seriously. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Well, okay. yeah, we consider it as part of our job. And do you, What do you use internal communication, by the way? Do you just email? Do you use Slack? Or Link. You use I use Microsoft Link. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you, who is, do you know why? Or do you it's just not? comfortable. It's interesting. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I've ever met anyone that uses that product. Really? Yeah, everyone uses Slack now or other, like, CoTab, HipChat. I guess you guys are big. Interesting. I, I have Maybe it's because of our size. Yeah, it could be. We need something you that like supports it. You enjoy? Yeah, totally comfortable. Absolutely. We also, we do WhatsApp group between the teams. We do WhatsApp group uh, between WhatsApp the teams. WhatsApp can't share files. This is true, but sometimes it's just about, you know, be there, yeah, coming, for, for, going. Yeah, for chilled communication, like uh, casual. Yeah, no, for sure. So you get here, okay, so you, what time do you usually get here? So once I get here around 9-ish, mm -hmm. then I'm already, like, I'm into it already. I already know what's going on, I know what the plan is, I know what's going on. What do you do as VP Marketing? Like, what kind of marketing? Because I know last time we talked, we were, like, completely in sync in terms of the importance right. of content and thought leadership and all that. Right. All those buzzwords. So I know I know you believe in this stuff, but what, what kind of marketing do, do you and the Code Field marketing team do? Like, what do you, what's your focus? We do marketing that we can measure, basically. You know, if there's something that we are focused on, can we measure it and can we improve it? And, you know, our theory Hello. is really get live and optimize. You know, that's really the, the, the password here in the, in the marketing team. Uh, we very much encourage creativity. So how do you, wait, so, so again, sorry for interrupting yeah, you. Yeah, of course. But we're in Israel, we're allowed to do that. What, uh, what, what, how do you measure, let's say for example, I'll give you one example, how do you measure the, effic the effectiveness of the, the content strategy? Like you're, you're blogging, how do you measure, the, how do you measure that? Um, actually, we measure uh, how many leads we generate, how many reads we get, how many shares we get. So we're measuring everything. Yeah, we have benchmarks for it all. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, we do uh, video. Oh, marketing. Guy Malachi is in here. You know Guy Malachi? Yes. He's the chief geek at Conduit. What's yes. his title? Best title ever. Love it. And Alon Carmel is in here also, also Conduit. Hello. Ex Conduit. I remember. Okay, we got Mo Sembiri okay. here, who's a blogger, tech blogger. Uh, who else? Robbie said. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep walking. All right. All right. I love this office, by the way. Seriously. Really awesome.
Yeah, it makes you feel it. It makes you feel like you want to come to the office. Totally, totally. It kind of has that vibe of like you know we're hardcore, we're intense, but we're also chill. Yeah, there's a, and there, you there's never a go hungry. cool theater here somewhere. Are we gonna go there? Oh we're yes, show, we're show definitely gonna go to a theater. A theater here is amazing. Entrance of the office. Hey guys, we're live. Say hi. <laughs> they were the ones that welcomed me here when I got here. Oh, listen to this story. So this nice gentleman over there back there welcomed me when I got here. And he called to let Joseph, the CEO, know that I was coming. And this nice woman named Netta answered the phone. And, I, and he goes, here, talk to Netta. And I'm like, okay. And remember, this is a 600-person uh, operation here. She picks up the phone. And who's Netta? Who's the person that? that I worked with in my first job out of college at Converse <laughs> 12 years ago. What are the chances of that? So that was just totally, totally random. Okay, look at this room. What? Love. Okay. Oh, my God. Amazing. Amazing. What do you do in this room? First of all, we eat. Eat is good. And then we eat some more. Yeah. Joseph had a birthday yesterday, so we threw him a big party here. So there was like a thousand cakes and movie theaters. Good thing I wasn't here yesterday. Okay. So we also have lunch here, of course. And we, I, yeah, we can have meetings. I'm going to sit here in this very comfy setup. Yes. Oh, my God. This, I thought the chair was comfortable. This is amazing. Wait, we have so, happy hour every Thursday. Okay. And um, every Thursday is a different theme. It could be popsicles. It could be uh, frozen yogurt. It could be wine tasting. But along with that, we also have lectures. And the lectures are very random. It could be about learning uh, body language. It could be about learning uh, wine tasting or, you know, the history. Every of. Thursday you do this? Um, almost every Thursday. It's amazing. Every Thursday we have a happy hour. For the whole company. The whole company. Yeah, not only Cold Fuel, all of Perion. And then we all get to mingle and talk and catch up it's really and, cool yeah it's great People sounds like a really out. nice kind of company culture that you guys have here yeah very positive culture so i mean you know i know we can't there's certain things we can't talk about because you guys are a publicly traded company but like let's talk about twitter for one second i'm wearing a twitter t-shirt right so twitter is an amazing platform okay agreed and every revolution in the let me let me sit next to you so they can see both of us hold on a second hold on a second this is weird that i'm like holding a camera you can't can move this thing yeah of course okay so, I'm not, I try to talk about Twitter and the challenges of being a publicly traded company without talking about Perion. So, Twitter is an amazing platform. Every revolution in the, in the world over the last 10 years happened because of Twitter. Or many of them, not every, but many of them. Yeah. And yet, their stock, the market doesn't like them. So, again, let's talk about Twitter, not Perion. But, like, what's your view on, you know, value of a company versus their stock? Because, you know, when Facebook IPO'd, a lot of people in my kind of network was like, a lot of people were like, um, they're not making enough money. I'm not going to buy their stock. Obviously, their stock is through the roof right now. Uh, they've made a lot of money. But do you think it's Twitter's lack of monetization? Like, why do you think Twitter is suffering so badly on the market, if you have any thoughts? I know that's not your expertise, or maybe it is. I don't know. But yeah. what are your thoughts? Uh, I think what most people are challenged, challenged are with the fact of seeing the longevity of the potential. Right. Uh, it gets stuck with the vision of seeing what's happening right now. We've become such a generation flux where we want everything here and now and understanding of here and now that we don't even see the potential of the business anymore. And those who do, they benefit. Um, you might see that Twitter is suffering right now, but I think in the long term, as a platform of communication, I mean, you just got to see the, the amount of engagement there. You just can't fight it. I, so I, I am not a stock guy. I've never bought a stock in my life. I don't mm. play in the market at all. Yeah. But when people ask me on a regular basis what I recommend in terms of stocks, obviously it's a huge risk because, you know, they're, they're not doing well. But I strongly, fundamentally believe in the platform. So I do agree with you that I think that, you know, it's suffering now. But in the long term, I think it's going to actually they're going to they're gonna bounce back, I hope. Because, again, I love the platform. Um, but, I mean... Again, without talking because it is a public company, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's tough to be a publicly traded company. How does that affect your job, if it does at all? Uh, it, it does affect my job in the uh, amount of information that I can share and uh, the way we use the brand themselves. Right. Uh, but I think that the world is very forgiving. I think they're very accepting to learn other information other than our internal financials and, right. and the things that I can't talk about. Right. So, and you guys are doing things. I feel like one, and, and you, you're working on a lot of cool stuff. But I yes. feel like you know, your your stock can like bounce back. You make some, you know, one good strategic move, whether it's a product or acquisition or whatever it is. And you know, well, uh, we're gonna get to the next topic, which is ad tech in general. But a lot of people kind of like wrote off ad tech. Uh, ad tech is dead. Obviously, you know, at that uh, conference we were at, ad yeah. tech Israel. Yeah. Without mentioning names, there's a certain individual in the mm -hmm. ecosystem who doesn't stop talking crap about ad tech. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, first of all, and again. I respect a lot of the people that say this this stuff. You can't say ad tech is dead. Come on, how, I mean, how Facebook, Google, that's said. their yeah. ninety percent of Google's like revenues ad tech. So then they're going to say, okay, it's just Google and Facebook. But a, a, a younger company or smaller company can't possibly succeed. Which again, in my humble opinion, is ridiculous. But 
Let me hear what your thoughts are on the people that say AdTech is dead. What do you think? If you say AdTech is dead, then you're actually saying that the internet is dead. Or you're saying that the means of communication via the internet is dead. And so that it doesn't make any sense. Actually, most people spend about 14, 15 hours a day either in front of a computer or a mobile phone, maybe even a little bit more. And that's where the world of communication is. Now, the business models are changing. For example, if um, a publisher used to print a magazine and they had advertising on in the magazine, there's no reason why they can't do a business model online. And in, online is not going anywhere, so why would ad tech go anywhere? Well, I'll play devil's advocate here for a yes. moment, even though we agree. Uh, there are those that will say there are other ways to monetize besides ads. You know, even native advertising, maybe the traditional ad tech is dead. Again, I don't agree, but let's just say for one second for argument's sake, uh, you know, display ads, right? Maybe that's dead, and you know, interstitials and, and, and kind of like intrusive, annoying ads are dead. But you know, it, you know, native advertising in my Facebook feed or maybe video advertising is not dead. There are those that will say, "Do you think display advertising in the olden kind of banners still has a has a has a place in our ecosystem?" It does have a place in our ecosystem, but it doesn't have to look like the way it used to right, look. Right. That's the evolution of uh, advertising technology. Right. It can't stand in the same place. It needs to evolve and develop according to the user's experience. Let's take into consideration that the internet was in the uh, mid-90s, we're still learning about user behavior and we're trying to customize. I don't think there's anyone online who's interested in giving their users a negative experience. Right. So at the ad tech world is simply well, giving them an arm to I, fix it. I don't know if that's a true statement because there are many companies that live off of fat thumbs that people by accident they click ads and they, they know that it's all fraud. There are companies like that. We know that there are companies like that 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 depend on a bad user experience. They put that ad in your face like a full screen. We've all seen it in mobile apps, a full mm -hmm. screen that you just like can't get rid of. So mm -hmm. you have to click it so they get a uh, you know a click. But uh, uh, clearly those companies are not sustainable yeah, and they won't be around. I think that whole behavior is simmering simmering down. I don't think that people are interested in even going into that business anymore. Right. Because it's not sustainable at all. At the end of the day, you know, it's going to hit the fan. In other Absolutely. words, if I click by accident and then the, then Coca-Cola doesn't get paid, then they're not going to the whole thing doesn't make sense, so nope. it's definitely going away. Dead. All right, so so I mean, generally speaking, though, you're saying the ad tech world isn't dead; it's just being reborn. It's evolving. I like, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's evolving. Evolving into something, into, into, into a different being, into a different well, I kind think of. What it, it was more focused on, you know, um, what the person, what the uh, the site was really focused on, what they wanted to say all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think now they're turning towards the other direction and talking about what the user wants to see. And so just like anything in marketing or anything in sales, you need to know who you're talking to, when you're talking to them, and you know what language they want to hear. Sh Sharon something. says ingenuity is always key. That is true. Agreed. That is true. We worked at Interactive together. Ah. Agav, mobile ad tech. Mm. Uh, you know, anyway. Um, okay, so the bottom line is, I mean, clearly there's something right going on here, happening here in terms of the vibe of company culture and yes. obviously the talent. So just the people that just came in, tell them again, you're hiring R&D across the board, product people, what product else? Product people. Any marketing? Engineers. Uh, Marketing, we're always happy to hear uh, of new talents. We're looking for an intern for the team as well. well listen to that. A lot of people, a lot of people have sent me uh, requests for interns like the summer and for whatever. They're looking to hire an intern in the marketing, yes. right? Yes, and they will learn a lot because we're not we're not a marketing team that focuses on uh, events where it can be something that's repetitive and understood after once or twice. We're talking about advanced technology, advanced digital media. Awesome. Uh, we're talking about trackable marketing activities. What are the required skills for someone to join as, a, as an intern? First and foremost, someone who understands the internet, okay? You don't have to be an expert, but you have to be a user, an avid user. Um, you'll be exposed to um, how to create a social community. You'll also be exposed to how to create a sales and marketing lead generation. And you report to Angie, too. And you report to me, and the team is very experienced. Do, does anyone ever tell you you look like Eva Longoria, or is it just me? Uh, yeah, people have told me. Some people have left like, uh, pictures of her on my screen. I did a side-by-side, -side and I snapped it this morning. I'm like, you want to meet Eva Longoria? Look, and I put, I put a side-by, you, it's kind of ridiculous. That's insane. No, you really do look like her, though. It's very really? funny. Anyway. Yeah, I am her. So, but you're on Snapchat, right? Uh... You're playing around with the platform. Playing around with the platform. As a marketing person, I feel like we have yeah, to. Yeah, no, we absolutely. To... I play around with all the platforms. So how do we get? So how, what are we gonna get pairing on on Snapchat? Ooh. People are gonna start thinking I get paid by Snapchat. Seriously. I don't get paid by Snapchat. He's in love with Snapchat. I just happen to think it's a very oh, interesting it storytelling platform. And you get your T-shirt with Snapchat on it. Now. I'm working on it. I'm right. working. On it. I have like a swag from every company except for Snapchat. It's a big mm. problem. We got some swag for you at my desk. That's now you're talking my language. I'm it's all good. You. That and steak.
Great. Um, okay, so I think we're, oh, we're Joseph's, I think, 11.30. Yeah, free. So gonna we're going to go say hello to Joseph now. Um, and I'm going to try maybe to do a little snap interview with him because we're not going to you know, have time to do a whole Facebook. He's kind of you know, a CEO of a public traded company. But anyway, anything last, kind of last things you want to tell the people watching or people that are going to watch it afterwards about, about um, Code Fuel, about Perion? What's your final words? I would say that uh, Code Fuel is um, out of my 19-year career in marketing. Wow. One of the yeah, one of the funnest experiences because of the pace. And Would it be awkward if I told you you look way too young to have been working in marketing for 19 years? Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's a little crazy. It's insane. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry go on. <laughs> this would be this would definitely be um, the position that I love the most because of the amount of uh, freedom here and creativity that you can really expose as a, per as a person and as an individual. Okay, and they are hiring, so they are hiring. you can send me your CV or you can send me your CV. You want to give out your email though? Yeah, okay, sure. So what's your email? Angie G at Perion.com. So that's A N G I E G. G. At P E R I O N.com. Let's do that right. one more time. A N G I E G. At P E R I O N.com. Send her your CV. You can write in the subject that you saw the stream so that she has the context. Always send emails with context. Very important. Agreed. And um, yeah, and I, I, really, I mean, this is, you know, don't, don't believe the hype about ad tech and whatever. This is a beautiful office and super, super talented engineers, clearly. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, it's been around for a long time. It's going to be around for a long time. And I highly recommend you, you get the opportunity to work with Angie because they're not, you know, the truth is we talked about this also yes. last time we met. They're not many really, really top-notch marketers in Israel. There are, there are a few, don't get me wrong, but not enough. Propor in proportion to the amount of startups there are and companies there are here, it's completely disproportional. So, you know, the opportunity to work for a real marketing kind of um, expert, if I may, like Angie would be a great opportunity in addition to everything else we said. So definitely send her your CV if you're looking, both in marketing, engineering, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Let's go say hello to Joseph. Let's go. All right, peace.